and look at that frame just calculated moving up and getting the beam the double headshot is going to come through here we'll see it another time as the shots are going to connect that player kick name is going to be very 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 weak and Frey with the crash pad in the box he's not going to be able to do it but the elim comes through it was no mr savage but still a nice elimination and so hopefully he's looking to you know put on a show is oh the beams come through and that's the no shield tag and you know what that means child he's going in He's going straight in. He's already in the box, controlling ramps, floors, all the way around, easily dropping this player down, almost choking on the shots, but it's Chapix. He's just giving us a show. Nice elimination, good shields, good loot overall that he gets to decide on what to take and bring to the next portion of his game. That's a tough name to fight, and he'll be running straight away after getting shot twice by Chapix. We move over, though, somewhere towards the center of the map. Joel's already in a fight against someone else. 90 players left alive. He's box to box, looking to just make it one less person. With so many other people around, it could be like we just saw with Chapix. A third individual, a third party coming in, trying to land a few shots and ruining Joe's day, because right now he's fighting Terran. He's landing big shots, and he takes them out. Not an average Joe there. He comes out on top. Yeah, so if you've never seen an early game before in Fortnite, this is basically what ends up happening. A lot of fights overall between people. And then after that, it's just rivalries that build up game to game. Here's Thomas HD. Sundown talked about him in the pre-show. His snipes, his shots are so lethal. There's another one, a quick one onto Mark Cote. And another one here too on this pontoon, this boat all the way across, individualized by itself in the map. He's landing big shots. He's only landing for 100 plus damage with this charged shotgun. It's great. And he has claimed this boat for game number one. And he's lucky that no one's on that side of his own. If you look, that white line in his own is pretty clear up into that purple arrow. So Kinzel has a very free rotation. And this is what we all dream about in Fortnite. And wow. Oh, looks like Kovacs should have Kovacs a little bit more there. Kinzel with another sniper rifle elimination. I almost thought he was going to go three for three there. He has to try to get this loot. He's fighting someone else going for it. It's going to be Helmchis over here who's going to be on the backside of this, getting beamed down all the way through. Kinzel is looking so good here in game one. He has more crash pads to take. He's already maxed out, but Clay, th th this is just crazy. Two back-to-back -back snipes. He already has two points before anyone else really has any. You don't have time to warm up. If you get eliminated in this game, you got to go sit in creative. You got to go sit in a dis Discord call with your friends. And you got to hang out and you just got to try to keep them mental. And so says, you know what? No, no, no. I'm going to be the one causing those people to be in the Discord. It's hard fine. It's a nice elimination there on the Mr. Funny Clown. Who like box fighting. They're specialties. People like Atlantis Lechi on your screen. They are just so good at getting straight into your face and not stopping the pressure until you are eliminated. And Lechi is no stranger to putting the pressure down onto a Ooh. player as Popo is going to go down. This is the Lechi that we've all expected to see in these moments. It is just dominant box fight prowess. And that's what he's setting up right now into this, this early in the mid game. This is the part of the game where a lot of people are also stuck near the zone and don't have that much more room to move as everyone starts to get pushed closer and closer to each other. You can see all these big bases, all these boxes side by side built up because no one really wants to move and take damage. Joe, a player that we were looking at, got taken out immediately. This is Cracks, who was in another box again. Instead of going for edits, he just runs around the entire build and gets quick hoot. And he needs it. He's got 12 builds in his inventory. And this is going to work out perfect. Nice tag shot there. He's got to get the pressure on. He doesn't have builds to keep this fight up. He's got to keep shooting and keep hitting these targets. The crash pad is going to go in. He is going to lose the player just a little bit. Savage needs to keep this up. His shots go through. They're missing there. Unfortunately, that player going to be able to get out. No crash pads remaining. Seven builds. And Snap is going to go down. And Savage really, really, really needed that elimination. I hope he gets there because it's him and Benji Fishy who are both in this heat. 54 and 52 eliminations while they were pulling through in the qualifiers and the finals of them too. So... It's cool to see how these guys are side by side. Savage is still trying to just keep the dream alive. Another elimination onto Gasta. He's gone. Still, he's all the way deep in the zone. I don't even feel like his game has fully started just yet. Two eliminations to boot already. And if I'm one of these players and I'm getting elimed in zone by Savage, I am scared of what he can do inside the safe zone. Is this pressure that he's putting down? He's stopping. He's stopping. Why is he stopping? He could have almost made it in. The shots go through. That player's wide, but no, Nate's going to take him down. Nate takes him down, and Savage did not have the mobility 
or the heals to move into zone. So not getting that siphon is the reason that Savage goes down. It's not where you'd expect to see him. It's all good. You got to remember it's game number one. There are six games that everyone has to play. Let she now might be able to take over Savage if he gets this elimination. Another crash pad play straight into the box. And Hunches will burn. This is the man I think Lechi was chasing the entire time. Finally hunts down his target. There's no escape when he backs you into a corner. Nero falling as he is rotating there. Concerning for Kenzo is the 24 builds that he has in his inventory. He needs to get an impact elimination as we more than likely will expect him to do with that crash pad. He's getting sprayed by the lobby. This is not good. He's got to make a play quickly. He's got to go on the offensive as the shots are going to come through. He's got to get a snipe. No way. Kinzel, Kinzel, Kinzel. What a snipe, what a save. His entire game. The Scrib, he's in a good spot. He's got five crash pads. He's got the inventory to make it happen. And he's looking actively for players rotating in his own to possibly get a snipe on. And there he goes. He finds <laughs> Game number one in Europe is the game of snipers. Heat number two has so many accurate players who can get eliminations from a variety of ranges. Scrib now joins that list as Refs Guard from up top watches what the entire server is doing, how people are getting eliminated instantly. What a nice showing here in heat number two. And it's going to get even harder as the moving zones move in 20 seconds. Nobody is really safe. As you see, maybe a cluster of players getting that zone pull. But that east side is completely empty on the map. The players have to rotate through other people. This entire game, we've been talking about how to move across the map, talking about the horizontal game of Fortnite. Once these zones start to move, it becomes a vertical game. It becomes about who has height, who is controlling the whole lobby. Taysen flies up, but then gets shot straight back down to the ground. That launch pad actually failing everyone else, though, is straight up in the sky. These server, these players are just dropping like flies completely. Taysen with 60 mats finds a very low ground base, but he needs to be able to get into a better spot here if he wants to see the rest of this game. Straight into the box, two tack shots down, and a huge elimination onto Pablo. And he finds Kid Shockwave Launcher in charge shotgun. That is going to be so huge for his game because now you talk about vertical. He is going to be the most vertical on the entire map. He is going to be on height in that moving zone, probably seven zone. We'll see him go for it. There's Benji is looking to battle for it right now. Does decide to sit up a little bit for mid ground and look for it, but no, he secured it. Benji's on height, but he will be facing down that weapon you're talking about, Clay, the Shockwave Launcher. It can send any player anywhere all the way into zone on this Fortnite map in this endgame if they do not block the shot that comes down. Benji is staying low now. Box to box, takes out Refsguard, the guy who had height before. Top 25, Milan getting another elimination. Benji controlling height, but for how long? He's still dropping it as more actions going on top of him. Kinzel finds another elimination as Safik finally wakes up in the server. 20 players now left alive as the 7th zone closes in. And this is where Benji operates so perfectly in these mid-ground tarps where he is able just to look at everybody in the server wow. and find Wanlast rotating through his own tarp. And that's the danger you run. If you're in somebody else's tarp, you are more than likely going to be eliminated. You have to try it as we get a nice pan shot. Taysan is on high ground. Let's she just got taken out. Thomas HD is still here right above Kinzel, who passes him the torch now of the best sniper in the endgame lobby. Griff is also looking in a very similar position, a very similar playstyle to Benji Fishy. Bill's in front of him, looking behind him with an AR all the way down to low. No shots hit just yet. Taysen is the one to control height. Everything slows down as we get to the final moments of the game. And we're not even in the top 10 yet, and zone is still moving. These players realize it's pulling back. Griff is in a really good spot. Hin is going to fall there as well griff is gonna take some zone damage but he's good he's fine he's got that surfish in his inventory he's got to find an impact frag though he cannot just deal with getting placement here he needs to find something and now it is gonna ramp up to the top but he's got to find an elim the top side of this map is so stacked on player names thomas hd benji fishy tayson skite all the way on low ground fights all around griff is just trying to survive here against all these players who have legend status down to the top eight now he has three eliminations 11 points a good start to the day how much further can he get though with no materials left and just a tactical shotgun for the close range here it goes straight into the box takes out train h barrett there it is what a sick elimination on the low ground Robab's falling there. That's Train H for Red. Is Sky going to pick him a nation? Now it's Benji versus Sky. Actually, Benji's going to be the one to do it as well. Benji now to 1v, 1v1. Nice edit down from him. He's got to be careful. Sky right on there. He's got to get the elimination. No, Taysan going to get it. Second question is pop. Taysan on the high ground. Benji versus Taysan. 
four eliminations versus however many Taysan has. He's trying to close it out. He's trying to come out swinging. And Taysan is going to pick up the victory out the five eliminations as well. Final moment having the four eliminations. So this victory out is ultimately what like swung this whole standings, right? Taysan finding himself the extra victory out and the points from that. I mean, he's now four point ahead of Benji to start this whole competition.